Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2020 Chrysler Voyager, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Kurt trailer hitch receiver. But before we do that, why don't you check it out and make sure this is gonna work for you. When it comes to the Voyager, uh, you know these vans are really capable, whether it's uh, work-related or even just for family life. You know, having a hitch back here is going to really help to open up your opportunities on what you can actually do with your Chrysler, whether you're trying to use a bike rack to go uh, ride some, some bikes, uh, maybe you're trying to get a cargo carrier back here when you're going on a long trip, free up some space, or if you plan on pulling a trailer around. You know, having the hitch is going to allow you to be able to do those type of things. With this being a class three hitch, it is gonna have that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening and really common size. A lot of different things are gonna work with it. At the end, we are gonna have a reinforced collar for some extra strength. And the hitch is gonna use that standard 5 8 pin and clip. Keep in mind though, pin and clip doesn't come included. If you need one, you can always grab it here at eTrailer. It is going to have plate style safety chain openings and those are going to be large enough to allow us to use just about any size hook that we might have. As far as the hitch's weight capacities go, it's going to have a 400 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating and that's going to be the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch so that's good for the majority of your bike racks and cargo carriers. As far as the hitch's maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 4,000 pounds. That's going to be the amount of weight that is pulling on the hitch so weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Uh, this can be used with the weight distribution system which is a separate component and what happens whenever you use that it's going to keep your trailer and your Chrysler level whenever you're towing so if you have a big camper or something along the lines uh, it's something that might be worth looking into for you. But with that said when you do use the weight distribution the weight capacities uh, go up a little bit. Tongue weight rating goes up to 500 and trailer weight rating will be increased to 5,000 pounds. With all that in mind though, I always do like to recommend, never a bad idea just to grab your van's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your vehicle can pull up much weight safely. Now we can just grab a couple of measurements and these will help us figure out what type of accessories are gonna work best. And if we go from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, it's gonna be right at about 12 and a half inches. So if you plan on pulling a trailer, chances are good, you're gonna to need to get a ball mount that has a rise in the shank. Probably somewhere in that four inch range, uh, generally speaking, would work best. If you go from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, that's gonna be about five inches, and you can use that measurement to help figure out that if any folding type accessories you might have, you can be stored in that upright position without hitting the back of your Voyager. Other than that, though, at the end of the day, if you're needing a hitch for the Voyager, it's one you really can't go wrong with. You know, it's going to look pretty good and get the job done. As far as the installation goes, uh, it's somewhat involved. Definitely not the hardest one I've done, nor the easiest. Um, there's a couple times where everything's a little bit tight, kind of tricky to work uh, in, but, you know, as long as you stay focused, it's definitely manageable. Speaking of that though, why don't we go ahead, pull into the garage and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be underneath the back of our Voyager. And first thing we need to do is remove this underbody panel. There's a bunch of fasteners holding it on. Um, the first ones we're gonna start with will be the ones that have an eight millimeter head. So I believe it's just several screws running along the edge here. Pull these out. And then there's going to be, I believe, a few more along this inside edge here that we need to take out as well. So if you look in the wheel well here, along this edge, we're gonna have two, and then there'll be one more kind of up a little ways. So go ahead and get them out. So here along this edge, there's actually two uh, eight millimeter fasteners. So again, we will get these removed. We can move to our 10 millimeter head fasteners. So there's gonna be several of them kind of just 
randomly placed throughout our shield. So we'll just work our way around and get them all removed. You do want to remove these as well. I'm going to allow you to pull this down and get to these two. It looks like these might be our last two here. And then we're going to have some um, screw type fasteners. So that's what these are here. You can take a screwdriver and unscrew them. These aren't going to come off uh, by themselves. They'll stay with the panel. Sometimes you have to kind of pull down on the panel while you're screwing them as well to get them to kind of release. But this should be all of them holding it up. So hopefully we can pull this out and set it off to the side. Lower our exhaust down a little bit, give us some extra room to work. Before we do that though, I like to support it um, just to help kind of control how fast and how far it comes down. Uh, so I take a strap, just run it from side to side and tighten it up a little bit. Pull out the exhaust down. We're gonna have a couple rubber isolator hangers we're gonna pop off. It does help to spray these down with some soapy water, some type of penetrating oil. And then what I like to do is kind of work it back and forth just to help kind of loosen everything up. But once that's done, then we can take a pry bar, big screwdriver will work too, or whatever you got, and just work one end of the rubber hanger off. So with that one off, we can move to the one here. I'm closer to the middle. Get that one off as well. And then loosen up our strap just a little bit. We don't have a ton of extra space, but it'll be enough to get our hands up in there and work. Now we can get our heat shield removed. So it looks like there's two fasteners holding it in. One will be here, 10 millimeter. And then it's like one right there. Once that one is off, you should be able to grab this. And lower it from our vehicle. So there's a diagram of the instructions which you can follow and I mark that area out where we need to cut. I'm just going to use a pair of 10 snips to do this and get all this material removed. So with our heat shield trimmed out now we're going to put it back in place except for now uh, we're going to put this one this nut back. The other one that we removed, the other white one, uh, we're not going to worry about because we cut that portion of the material out. And then eventually, whenever we put our underbody panel and stuff back up, those fasteners are going to help keep this up as well. Get our hardware in place. So just for reference, we're over here on the driver's side. We're going to have two attachment points over here using this hole as well as this one. I'm going to start back here though. Take the coiled end of your fish wire, put it up through the hole, and we're going to push it back. What we're trying to do is get it to drop out of this larger hole. Sometimes it'll come right out. Other times you might have to kind of reach up there and help guide it. But what you're going to do is take a spacer block and a carriage bolt. We'll thread the carriage bolt on and we can feed our hardware up until it drops down and then for this one it's going to be a little different you're just going to take your fish wire put the spacer block over it and 
thread the carriage bolt on, and then feed it up uh, this way. Over on the passenger side, it's gonna be set up the same way, same hardware combo and everything with one exception. Uh, over here, you're gonna have one more bolt that goes into that attachment point there. Moving back over here to the driver's side now, if you look right here, we're gonna have this stud with a 10 millimeter nut on it. Uh, we're gonna just remove the nut there. Since this is no longer being utilized, we can just get rid of it. A lot of times you can grab it with vice grips and just work it back and forth and get it to break off. I'm just going to speed things up a little bit and use a Dremel tool to uh, cut that off out of the way. I do just want to go over the hardware that we're going to use to secure the hitch once it's up in place. So once you're holding it up there and your bolts are passed through, you can remove your fish wires and you're going to take a conical tooth washer, put that on, and then a hex nut. All right, you want to make sure that the teeth on the washer are going to be facing up towards the hitch. I do want to mention in some cases, instead of receiving a conical tooth washer and a hex nut, you'll receive just a flange nut like this. And it works the same. It's kind of just those two pieces built into one. But if you have this type of hardware, pretty straightforward. Once the hitch is up there, you'd simply just thread these right onto the bolts. Before we put our hitch up, I just wanted to go over something real quick. So passenger side, there's only three openings. So straightforward there. Um, in terms of where the bolts are going to come through. Driver's side though, there's several different ones and you're going to be using this one here. And then depending on what you have in terms of uh, this attachment point towards the front of our vehicle, if you have a standard gas engine like we do, you're going to be using this one. If you have a hybrid, you're going to use this one. So just wanted to point that out. Uh, but with that said, now we can get our hitch up. The next set of hands, We'll get our hitch going and drop your wires down through the right holes. And you want to start on the passenger side, so kind of hit the hitch over the exhaust. And once that is where it needs to be, we can get our hardware to line up here. And Push this up into position. Once we have it up though, you want to get whole wire off. Take our hardware combination. And you want to get at least one started on each side, hand tight. That way the hitch will support itself while we work on the rest of the hardware. Once all the hardware is in place and hand tight. We can come back with either a 19 millimeter or three quarter inch socket and snug it down. Once everything is snug, we need to make sure and come back with a torque wrench and tighten everything down to the amount specified in the instructions. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can always get one here at E-Trailer or a lot of times you go to your local auto parts store They'll have one there available that you can rent. Now we can get the exhaust rehung. So I got the hanger on the back one already. This one's the same. Just re-lubricate it and you can usually get it on there with your hand, pop it in place. And then once it's supporting itself again, we can remove our strap. Now with our hitch in place and everything, we can come back to our underbody panel and trim it out. So there's a diagram in the instructions, tells you where to cut. So I drew that out. This is almost like a thick cardboard. So you could probably use a regular pair of scissors. To get it done, or a pair of snips, or whatever you got, whatever works best for you. Go ahead and just get this uh, just get this material removed. You can simply uh, resecure it the opposite way that we removed it.
One thing I do actually want to mention is I did have to cut out just a little bit more material on this side, close to the center of our vehicle, just to get it to clear. Uh, not really a big deal, just something I wanted to point out. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2020 Chrysler Voyager.